Hello, my name is Stephanie Fry. I'm a docent at the Wichita Art Museum, and today I want to show you this amazing abstract piece by Felrith Hines named Red Stripe with a Green Background. Felrith Hines was born in Indianapolis 108 years ago, yes. The person that created this amazing piece of art that's still relevant today lived over 100 years ago. By 13, he, he started taking art classes. His family saw tremendous talent, and he knew at that young age that if he could paint, it could give himself a better life. It took him over 20 years, but he finally is able to afford an education at the Chicago Art Institute. I was particularly inspired by the fact that he said he worked at night. He actually worked as a ra waiter on the railroad, and he did that at night, and he went to school during the day, which didn't leave much time to sleep. But obviously, it shows his strong desire to create art. In 1945, he moves to New York City. He works at various jobs. He continues his education at NYU and the Pratt Institute. But he, he wasn't able to support himself as an artist, and he worked at a huge variety of jobs. This elegant man worked as a fashion designer, he painted china, he worked as a framer, but then he settles in on work doing conservation work. So conservation work is done to old artwork that has been damaged in some way. So think about, he had these nice fine motor skills that he was able to bring to his art as well. He worked in conservation, um, he worked at the Hirshhorn Museum, he worked at the National Gallery in DC, and that was really his full-time job till he retired. This piece, Red Stripe with Green Background, was made after he retired. But let's go back a little bit to his time in New York. When he was in New York during the civil rights, civil rights era, he was part of that. He was part of helping promote the African-American artist. He belonged to a group called the Spiral Group, and they were called the Spiral Group because you think of a spiral as it winds around, it goes up, but they were a variety of ages, and they all painted in a different style. They were all very different, but they were all African-American. They all wanted to promote each other's work. Sometimes they traveled to, to D.C. for the march, and so they would collaborate. How do we get there? safely and how do we pay for it and they only met for two years and it had a big impact on his life and most of these artists wanted to paint what was their experience Thelworth Hines really wasn't interested in that he said he was colorblind well obviously he saw color as you look at this piece but he liked all the different cultures he was not associated with people because of the color of their skin and he liked that diversity in New York Let's talk about this piece. When you first look at this, abstract art, it isn't a landscape, is it? Or a portrait? Or a still life? I don't know about you, but as I walk through the gallery, it catches my eye, and I love this piece. Well, let's see what he's done to attract us to this piece. When I first see this, I see this bold red stripe, and then I go down to this almost daffodil yellow. It's bold as well, isn't it? So as you see this, you think about how he was calculated in using primary colors. Primary colors to catch your eye. Of course, the red, the yellow, the two tones of yellow, and then the blue. And then he contrasts them. He contrasts them to not only be a complementary color, but it comes on to another shade, doesn't it? He adds a little bit of blue to this green to give it kind of a warm feeling that would contrast with these hot colors that he's used. Now also, let's look at this a little more. Let's look at this green background. Is it the same green as it goes up? It's shaded darker, almost like an ombre, isn't it? And as you look down here, it's even darker than as you look up here, isn't it? And it helps her eye go up and see the softness and then come down to the boldness. It almost makes me feel like it creates some dimension, even though this is flat. There's no texture to it, but I still feel like there's a dimension as I look through here. I also want you to look at these bold geometrics. We have a pyramid here that almost seems to extend under the painting, don't we? Let's examine the lines as they thicken a little bit and then come down here and narrow and thicken. Let's look inside. We've got a little bit of gray shading and then it gets a little lighter. 
it almost makes me feel like I'm looking through a window. I almost want to come in here and am I missing something? It has, it has a very much of a dimensional quality that you feel like as you look through here, this goes beyond the red stripe with the green background, doesn't it? Let's look at this as well. This almost looks like it's moving. So you have this very organized background with this very playful rectangle that I almost imagine that it moves around and it twists around. He's done the same thing. He shaded this and this is lighter. This makes this recede deeper into this piece. He finally retires and then he starts to do his art full time. And this piece is a result of that.